sweltering heat coupled with lack of access to water has resulted in the loss of 1,000 chickens per day, the drying up of crops, stunted growth and low dairy production across the country. On a daily basis, I have complaints coming in. We have farmers in terms of crop that is losing up to 30% of those crops. We have broiler farmers losing at least 10% of that. We have livestock farmers in terms of that that their their production levels has also dropped due to the additional HES, um, stress from the heat wave as well. President of the Agricultural Society of TNT, Daryl Rampasad, takes us to one farm to witness firsthand the effects of climate change. Has it ever been this bad in terms of the, the dry spell, the heat wave? There are times that we have went through this previously within Trinidad and Tobago. Just as the same as the, we are custom with the additional rainfall. So these are things that have been happening year after year after year. These pepper plants are supposed to be three times their size. And for the crops that do survive the scorching temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius and above, like this sorrel for instance, consumers will soon start feeling the pinch in their pockets. We're heading into two seasons, Diwali and Christmas to follow. We can anticipate to see higher food prices again and again due to the effects of climate change. If we continue at this rate, we can see tripling as it did in the later part of last year as well with the additional rainfall. It can triple, right? Because remember last year we had produced tomato going from $6 to $30 a pound. We seen for Millagen, hot pepper and others followed right after. And if it continues in this manner, we are going to see that. With the budget to be read on October 2nd, Rampasad hopes for an increase in allocation to agriculture. In terms of releases, it's a big struggle in terms of releases based upon availability of funds. And then the year flies so quickly as well too. Imagine that we have now completed the financial year and the Agriculture Society has only gotten approved from their budget less than 7%. But their wish list isn't only limited to money. Well, what we like to see in agriculture is actually improvement in terms of agriculture infrastructure. Right? So what we're looking at, last year we were drowning and this year we're drying up. And some of the same channels that we use to irrigate our crops, we also use to drain the fields. He also hopes for the continuous education of farmers, particularly to deal with climate change how we can utilize less water, irrigation systems that utilize less water, even within our animal care, how we can mitigate the effects of heat stress. So for example, in the poultry pens, if we can set up misters and all these things, above ground pens and whatnot that allow the air flow for the animals. But all of this as well is going to need to happen through an educational process. Making the incentive program more accessible is also key to greater local food production. We have more than 65% of the farming community that cannot access the incentive program because of one criteria which states that you must be a holder of a lease, landowner or have permission to use the same land. What about our brothers who are squatting? And we are well aware that these are daily contributors to agriculture in Trinidad and Tobago. In the last fiscal year, agriculture received the second lowest budgetary allocation at $1.3 billion. Urvashi Tawari, Rupnarain, TV6 News.